You're two hours into a task and you got your tabs open, you know where you are in the code base, you know how the interactions are working between classes, and you're ready to implement the solution, but then, knock knock knock, your boss is calling, and you have to hop on a call quickly to justify a pull request that you made three days ago, but you're still battling comments on. And then you come back to your code and you have no memory of this place. This is just one of the problems that can be solved with an application that I've been using for the past year. Every software engineer that I've introduced to it has adopted it, and they've had similar results. I use it all the time making these videos, just to quickly sketch out and visualize things for the viewer. And that's the smallest use case I have of this, I mostly use it for work. So in this video I'm going to cover what is Excaladraw, how you can never lose your mental storage again from distraction, and how you can transform your meetings and messages to communicate better with essentially no extra input. So Excaladraw is an online whiteboard that their hosted version on their website holds on to what you've been drawing in your cookies. It's open source and to be honest it has a lot of features that go well beyond what I actually use it for day to day. Essentially what it is is just some tools for quickly jotting down information and simple formatting so that there's enough features that you can communicate what you need communicating but not so many that it's overwhelming. You can pick this up pretty quickly. And so I have two instances of this. I have my home stuff which is pretty much everything to do with my content creation. And then in the office, my work related sketches. Now, I don't want you thinking, ah, oh, but I hate art. Why the hell would I use this? Because I've never been good at drawing or that kind of creative outlet. But what this does do is it gives you just enough tools to quickly put down what you're thinking. I found two use cases where this is very powerful in my day-to-day -day at work. So to tackle the problem that we just started with there, of loading information where part of our job right is to have a problem, go into the area, understand it to the point that we can solve the problem, and then implement that solution. But the problem is that doesn't take five minutes. That can take anywhere between a couple of hours and a couple of days, maybe even weeks. And the problem that you run into is, okay, I've got all this information loaded in my head, but I haven't offloaded it anywhere. And if it grows in scope or you have breaks, you can lose the key bits you've spent a while uh, building. So this week, I was dealing with a complex tree of view models and views where I had a base, I had a base view model, which had a bunch of inherited regions and view models in, nested inside of it. These had their own logic and events firing between them. And you had some buttons on some VMs that would shoot back to the base information view model, update some properties, shoot, shoot into the list and update it. And obviously while I was writing the code, this was easy to keep in mind, but we're sure, yeah, when you're working in the code, this might just immediately make sense. But the problem I had is I had to turn to a colleague to help him with a piece of work. And then when I came back, I'd pretty much completely misplaced how these were interacting. And it occurred to me, well, if I just sketched it out like I have done just now to display this, I've already got those images. And so now looking back at this, I can see, oh, yes, right, well, Here's visually where they are on the screen, here's their names. Say we have an event in Graph with Buttons, which updates some properties in the base view model. And that event then trickles down through other view models to update information. Well, if I map it out like this, suddenly I can lose it. I don't have to hold this information in my head. I can just simply scroll away, go back to my code, carry on. And then in the event where, I f where things do become confusing and I forget my bearing, oh, I can look back and be like, yeah, I've already mapped this out. This is where I was looking. And it's just these quick cues that only take a minute, if that, to sketch up. But now I've got a trail of breadcrumbs of where I've been and what I was doing. Because in the context of the task, it's like, oh yeah, well, I need to split these into their own independent events. Well, maybe I'd map out a better way of doing this with a data model. And instead of using an update event, maybe I just have one data model with the properties in. But live updates every single time you change the property within the, within the view model. Then I completely get rid of this weird event chain that I have. And now I've got this visualization, I just go and implement. And that's going to give me some clarity. I've actually laid out a plan as I've gone. And I've got some structure. I've got something to fall back on if something goes wrong. And it's taken me only seconds. Also, if I get to a point where something goes wrong, say, for example, actually, this event doesn't trickle down. And I, I just can't for the life of me work out where the gap is bridged, how we're getting the information from the graph update to the complex image. Well, suddenly I can turn to my colleague and be like, hey, look, I'm looking at these view models, which... They've got a visual representation, so they're probably going to immediately be like, oh, yeah, I've seen that part of the system. Look, well, I know that there's an update and it goes through these view models and it gets to these locations through an update event. But I can't work out what the missing link is here. That's a lot easier to show and explain than it is to first principles explain to someone your problem. Or even from the solution perspective, hey, look, here's how the system currently works. Here's how I want it to be updated to work. Is this a good idea? It might not be. My point is, is, this is such a low effort, high rewards skill that will make a meaningful difference if you're software engineering. 
And that leads me on to my next point of the communication, right? I don't just do this for myself while I'm coding. I do this when I'm in pair programming, when I'm in meetings, or even if I'm about to send a message. I hopped in a meeting not too long ago with a senior and I was trying to explain a piece of work that I was doing. So I actually just opened up Excalibur almost instinctively and started sketching out my problem. And he was like, oh, like, what is this? What is this program? And he's actually got a whole complete level ahead of me. I, I was having a look at some of his documentation that he had uploaded for the team for some changes being made in the way that we run, and I noticed that some of his graphics were drawn in Excalidraw. And to be fair, they are far more complicated than mine. It's such a worthwhile thing that while you're talking to somebody, just open up a page and start sketching out the points that we're making. Because then, as you're going, if there's anything, like, clear that needs to be remembered, or you can both see what's being drawn. So if you draw something that doesn't represent what they said, they can say, hold on a minute, no, 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 I didn't say 30% and 70%, I said 50% then you're keeping communication aligned. I even do this just for messages, not just calls while I'm talking to people where I'm sharing a screen. You know, I made a video on problem solving where you define the problem, work out what's causing it, find possible solutions and implement it. If we're drawing out our thought process as we go through it, then it's easier to look back and see the whole scope and be like, ah, oh, well, actually, you need to be more specific there. This is going to bring clarity to your work. But speaking of workflow, one of the things you might be thinking is actually... What does a good software engineering workflow for problem solving look like? Well, now that you've got the tools to more carefully navigate a workflow, I've got this video here where I talk you through my workflow for problem solving. So if you click this video here, hopefully it'll help. Cheers.